I'll never come back. I wish you well, Mr. Thornton. Look back. Look back at me. Financial advisors tell me that if you were to take this money and use it to run Warbra Mills, you could give me a very much better rate of interest. It is only a business matter. You would not be obliged to me in any way. It, it is you who would be doing me the service. not dream of growing up as a princess. But some palaces are not at all what you'd think. Even a palace can be a prison. Ah, uh, may I present her royal... Hello. Her I'm Ernst, ma'am. This is my brother, Albert. Have I offended you in some way? No. I know what it is to live alone inside your head, while never giving a clue as to your real feelings. Leopold asked you to tell me that? No. Uh, he actually told me never to mention it. <laughs> well, how little he knows me. Your hand must cover the leather like this. Mm -hmm. You make the firm claw, one finger, two fingers. Claw. Yes, and back to beneath your chin. And bend this arm slightly and rotate to catch the arrow. You just got your nut. I was riding. Sit, please. I don't want you to feel quite at home. I'm sure you're aware why I wished you to come here. Because it would make me happier than anything. Too happy, really, if you would agree to what I wish. And stay with you. And stay with me. And marry you. And marry me. <laughs> Sure that she is in receipt of all that is due to her as a child of mine. That is simply impossible. What is right can never be impossible. She is black. She is my blood. But she is. She takes your name. 
I am not ashamed. Now we have two nieces in our guardianship. No, Elizabeth was in much need of a companion. And that is what we shall say when questions are asked. We shall say that in accordance with her birthright, she is entitled to live beneath this roof. Marriage? Impossible. Good evening to you. Uh, my name is John de Venier. I believe I may have disturbed a lady of this house. Ah, oh, there she is. Please forgive me, though you barely gave Sir, me a chance. Sir, I do not to... believe we have been introduced. Indeed. Uh, why do you not dine with your family ever? That is not correct. Well, forgive me, but twice now I have seen you separated from the gathering. Tell me, do not render me your amusement. Keep up with the zombie. We had a lovely party. It was a memorable. Forgive me. You are above reducing yourself for the sake of rank. I pray he would marry you without a penny to your name. For that is a man who will truly treasure you. In Belsize, who is waiting to be your no, wife. No, I have an ambitious aunt in Belsize, who, like you, assumes that wealth and reputation are all that life depends on and despises love as though it were the devil's own creation. Love! You claim no, love! Yes! Love. Yes! I love her! I love her with every breath I breathe! Nothing, if not to be his wife. But your feelings for me are so... that you would be my wife. Because... because I cannot conceive of a life without you. I love you. For all that you are. And with all... all that I am. Negotiations with Admiral Croft. Croft? Yes. Are you acquainted with the gentleman, Miss Anne? Yes. No, um, that is to say, I, I'm familiar with his career. Good heavens, Anne. What is the matter with you? Nothing. I assure you, I'm quite well. Admiral Croft's wife is. is. Mrs. Croft? Indeed. And Mrs. Croft is the sister of Captain Frederick Wentworth. Wentworth? I see, your father thought it a most unsuitable match. He would never have countenanced an alliance he deemed so degrading. He was not alone, as I recall. It's highly prudent to break off the understanding. Well, prudent it may have been, and yet... Captain Wentworth has made his fortune in the war and is now extremely wealthy. Has he written to you? No, never a word. Intentions toward you had been truly sincere. Would he not have contacted you when his circumstances changed? I think very differently now from what I was persuaded to think eight years ago. Oh, Captain Wentworth, do, do, do come in. Forgive me, I... The door was open. Oh, Captain Wentworth, this is my elder sister, Anne. We are acquainted. Really? But Anne has never said a word about if it. I am to speak in earnest. What I desire above all in a wife is firmness of character. A woman who knows her own mind. I cannot abide timidity or feebleness of purpose. 
A weak spirit, which is always open to persuasion, first one way and then the other, can never be relied upon. is settled now in your family for a union between yourself and Mr. Elliot. It was added that you were to live at Kellynch. That he is utterly misinformed. Misinformed? Utterly? Yes, Captain. Quite mistaken. No truth in any part of it. None. Anne! Thank you, Charles. I'm quite, quite well. You look quite done for. We shall have to get you home directly. The thing of it is. to accept it. Thank you. Are you? Quite certain. I am. I am determined. I will. And nothing, you may be sure, will ever persuade me otherwise. to dance as your friend has? Thank you, madam. I rarely dance. Well, let this be one of the occasions, sir, for I wager you'll not easily find such lively music or such pretty partners. Look, there's one of her sisters. She's very pretty, too. And I dare say, very agreeable. She is tolerable, I suppose. But she's not handsome enough to tempt me. <laughs> Mr. Darcy looks at you a great deal, Lizzie. I cannot think why, unless he means to frighten me with his contempt. Should we perhaps all walk toward marriage? You are too generous to trifle with me. If your feelings are what they were last April, tell me so at once. My affections and wishes are unchanged. But one word from you will silence me on this subject forever. Feelings are so different. In fact, they are quite the opposite. <laughs> 